Today is all about sewing a super cool welt pocket, easy to sew on a knit jacket. I'm going to show you step by step, a bit of unconventional tips coming, so it'll be interesting. Knit peak bomber jacket, keep watching. Hi sewing friends, my name's Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. In this channel, every single video has practical sewing footage for you to see, different techniques, approaches, some very unconventional, all coming from three decades of sewing experience. I started super young and I absolutely love sharing all my sewing with you. If you think that's a cool idea, go ahead and subscribe, tap on the bell so you get notified when I have new videos coming up and you don't miss out. In yesterday's video, I shared with you my super crazy leggings I made for myself using the Super G tights pattern from Green Style Creations. And the pattern I have to share with you today is also from the same brand. They do specialize in making sporty, more casual type active wear clothes for men, women, and children. And I have been collecting a lot of their patterns. I really like them. And recently I got around to sewing the midway bomber jacket. All the patterns from this brand are still 30% off through today. So today is the last day that you can get these patterns for less if you like them. and. The bomber jacket is amazing. This style has raglan sleeves and these sleeves have two pieces. So they have a seam going on top of your shoulder. And in that seam, they've incorporated the shoulder that there. So you'll get really nice shaping there at the shoulder. It also allows in that seam to um, have details like piping and contrast things. If you know you want to make a really sporty looking bomber jacket, I just made mine simple. There is a zipper, of course, separating zipper, it is a jacket. There is a traditional bomber style collar, cuffs and the waistband that are done with a different fabric with ribbing. And there are options in the instructions to make it not lined or fully lined. The length of this jacket is not long, it hits around the high hip. I've always loved bomber jackets and I've made some in the past, even with outrageous fabrics like Georgette and stuff fully lined of course, but I love them in woven and in knit. This pattern specifically is designed for stable knits. So if you have a really fun print scuba or some ponty, some double knit, you don't want those drapey lightweight knits for this project at all. <laughs> what is awesome is that if you have a nice structured knit and it only stretches horizontally, and it doesn't stretch up and down, you can still use it because the design doesn't need it to stretch up and down. The stretch recommended is to be at least 50%. So I had my fabric chosen. I always knew it was gonna be some type of jacket. When I purchased it, I love the print, the colors, everything. I had a suspicion that it didn't stretch 50%, but I went and tested it and I have to be honest, it wasn't 50, it could have been about 40 almost 50 so i'm happy with that if you choose to line the jacket the lightweight knit type tricot fabric or whatever you want to use inside also has to have the same stretch 50 percent the length of the zipper required depends on the size so anywhere from a 19 to a 21 inch jacket zipper separating zipper this pattern comes from sizes extra extra small to 3xl and the largest measurements here for the waist are 38 inches and for the hips are 50 inches. It's the same size chart I showed you yesterday when I showed you the leggings. So they are alphanumerical and they have a range of body measurements for each size. This is not a fitted garment, so there could be a bit of leeway there with the measurements. Um, I chose a straight extra large because that is what is going to fit my waist and my hips. Now, this jacket doesn't reach the full hip, and I knew that, um, especially when I printed the pattern and I measured the pattern pieces, I thought maybe this jacket might be a little short for me. I am taller. These patterns are drafted for a height of five foot seven, and I added an inch. So I just added an inch across the front and the back main pieces just to have it a little bit longer. With these styles that are casual, sporty, that are more straight and that hit the high hip, it's not possible to actually lengthen them that much because then you would have to adjust the side seams and the band that goes at the bottom because the lower you go, the closer you are to your full hip and that's where the measurement gets larger. So I knew by lengthening one inch I was safe and the hip measurement of the jacket at the high hip was still going to be good if I just lengthened it a tad. There aren't any finished garment measurements here so I did have a quick 
flat measuring of the bust and the waist. It's very easy, just across the pattern, discounting the seam allowance, adding up the front and the back, and I knew that extra large was gonna be fine for me. I filmed the complete, like from start to finish, so along for Patreon in April. So the ladies that support me on Patreon on the Orchid Tea, they've already seen this. What I'm going to show you is the most interesting technique of the jacket. The welt pockets are slanted. It is a stable knit fabric. It's not as hard as you think to sew a welt pocket. And I opted to make the pocket piece that was going to be visible on the welt in a contrast color because I'm working with a print fabric. A welt pocket is not hard to do, it's just that you need some precision, a bit of patience and if you're going to take a few minutes to make one on each of the fronts and the welt itself is the same print as your printed jacket, no one's going to see it and you're going to put your hands in the pockets but the beauty of your technique won't be seen. So I did it in a contrast color. Now. When you see the video tutorial about this, you will see that I followed the instructions perfectly and there was something that I didn't do that I always, always say to do. I, you know, I need to myself do what I preach. I'm just gonna leave it at that. You will see what happened there uh, when I was trying to fuse some of these pieces and there was still a good solution, but at the end I'm showing you how to do it in a way to avoid the problem I had. So let's hop into the welt pocket fun. Super cool. What can I do? Time flashed by and I woke up on the other side of the moon. These are the pieces for the bottom pocket, the one that is actually going to be visible on the other side. If you compare the size of the top pocket, the top pocket is smaller and that's easier to not get confused. The bottom one is wider, just bigger. And this area there is the one that needs to be interfaced. Now on top of this interfaced area here that you can't see because it's all black and I'm using black interfacing, this is where the marks of the rectangle need to be super precise. And because I'm confident I can't do that with any marking system I have, I'm going to be using a paper method that I've used before and I think it gives really precise results. Okay, so here are all the pattern pieces. Um, I've done a lot of preparation work already to be able to sew. These are the two sleeve pieces here. There is a front sleeve and a back sleeve. You can see the shape on the top has incorporated a shoulder dart. And that is the cuff there that I'm going to use ribbing for. Here are the main pattern pieces. There is the front where I have interfaced the area that is going to have the world pocket and the center front where the zip is going to go and the back here is cut on the fold up there is the little collar piece maybe you can see it that is also cut from rib knit at the bottom is the waistband it's on the fold there the black area cut from rib knit and towards the center front it will have a rectangle that will be made from the same main fabric and over there are the two pocket pieces. The bottom pocket piece is larger and has an interfaced area. That is what is going to be sewn onto the main front. And that is the one that's going to be visible as the work pocket. So that's why I've chosen black for that. And the top pocket is just a smaller piece that will just be seen on the inside. These are the bottom pocket pieces. This is the area that's been interfaced on the wrong side of the pocket. This is the right side of the pocket and you can see that this is the shape there, mirrored. So I can't really transfer this rectangle onto the fabric accurately at all. Um, I don't have a way to do that properly. So I have just uh, copied mirror images of that area of the pocket. So if I put these two there, I've just copied that sort of shape of the pocket mirrored images. So I can put one here and one there. And what I'm going to do carefully is hand baste the paper onto the fabric and that will replace the marking that I would have to do with some sort of tool. I don't have anything I could use to mark on black that's going to be accurate. Chalk is too thick. Um, yeah, and I really want this rectangle to be nice and accurate. This is one of the front pattern pieces. That is the neckline. That is the center front. And going down... On the back is the area I fused 
and I had to put my pattern piece again, put pins through the little corners of these rectangles and I have a dot there, a dot there, a dot there and a dot there. So it's sort of slanted there. I don't think you'll be able to see it. I can barely see it. I marked it with chalk. It's just four dots there. And that is my reference so that I can place these pocket pieces on top. I have my bottom pocket pieces here and as I mentioned I was going to just hand base this paper on top and that is going to replace the markings I would have had to do on this pocket piece. This is on the wrong side, under there is the area that's been interfaced as I've shown you before. So I'm going to take one of these and this is the center front over there and the round bit of the pocket is going to go over there and now I have to align this rectangle with the marks I've got underneath and I have my marks underneath so I'm just going to put a pin through one of these corners and find and find one under there okay so I've just got pins through just so that the dots here match the dots on the bottom so I'm confident that this is where this will go and I don't want that to move so I'm just going to do another row of hand basting around here to hold that in place so that it doesn't go anywhere. So I have my two pockets basted on this side too and what happens here is that these are right sides together. My smooth part here is my right side of the fabric that I've chosen and it's touching the main fabric there. I'm going to sew this with a straight stitch with a tiny stitch length very small probably like i don't know 1.5 or something and just go around the whole rectangle once that's done i can rip all this paper out and because the stitch length is going to be so little it'll just come out super easy and then i can go ahead and cut in the middle there before reaching the bottom and then cutting diagonal lines like that if this was a light colored fabric and i could mark my rectangle well i wouldn't do this paper business Okay, so now I can just remove these basting stitches, they don't need to be there. Now if I did a larger stitch length, I would have pieces of paper like stuck in between them and there are tiny bits here and there but nothing important. And so you can see where that rectangle has been sewn. Now I can cut across the middle. So that's been cut and now this pocket can be turned to the other side and then it needs to be pressed really well. What I noticed happened on this area here that was interfaced was that it tended to shrink a little bit. So this area became slightly shorter than it used to be compared to this area here that isn't interfaced. So under there. So that means that this edge here is very narrow if you can see. Now it won't be a problem, I can still sew it, but it would have been easier if this was slightly wider like the original uh, size of the pocket was. So learn from my experience, the interfacing can shrink this area. For the next time, I think I will fuse that area first, the top part of the pocket and then cut it out so that I don't risk this happening. That's where block fusing is really practical. I didn't consider it in this project for some reason and pin on the side. So this folded bit here is what on the other side will be visible. This pocket's going to look like that. And that's why I wanted this uh, contrast to be here, the black. Because if I did this with this same type of print, then you can't really see that. These little areas need to be closed off. You can see this is wanting to poke over here. So if I move this here, you can see all this bulk there, that little triangle. So this needs to be sewn right there, right on the edge. As you see, I'm sewing through a few layers, but that needs to be sewn closed there. And I'm going to be sewing right on the edge. So 
so I will do the same thing here. Okay, so that little triangle has been sewn and this one has been sewn there on that side. Now when we flip this, this is how this pocket's gonna look. It's slanted. The top pocket will go behind that. So I've got these done. They're both there. I've given them a good press. This needs to be top stitched around the edge, all around there. These threads I'm just gonna pull them back and secure. I'm happy with that top stitching there on the edge. I have put my top pocket, the smaller one, on top and this is the one that is going to be visible here on this side when you put your hand inside. So that's why I wanted it to be the same fabric and everything. Could have been a contrast one but I don't agree. I think if you're gonna see it when you put your hand inside it should be the main fabric. And that is the one that goes on top. Now remember I mentioned that my other pocket, the bottom pocket, the one that was interfaced shrunk. You can see the difference here in the width. You can see how small I got here on the side compared to this one. So on the edges here, I'm not going to have much space like to sew them together. Like right there, I don't have much space at all. But it is possible. And now it's just one continuous stitch to sew them both together and then the pockets are done. So I'm going to start somewhere here on the top, always being careful to keep the main jacket away so that you're not sewing there because you're just trying to sew these two pocket pieces together, not sew anything onto the jacket, you know. I'm going to use a small seam allowance. Here I can touch and, and feel where the one on the bottom is smaller. So I'm going to take all this bulk from the main front and push it to the left so I can just sew these there. I'm coming to this smaller area there where I'm going to have to get close to there. A bulky bit there. Okay, so I've sewn that. It's not the prettiest pocket you've ever seen me do. And you see how it got really wonky here where I, I had to narrow where I was sewing to be able to catch them both but it's done you know this is not going to be seen it's going to be covered with lining and the important thing is that from the outside it looks really pretty okay after all that pocket saga you can see I still got a good result visibly on the outside the pocket is totally functional but the seam allowance on the inside when I was sewing both pocket pieces together got a bit tricky. I think you could get away with uh, having this pocket shrink, but it's not the ideal. So you see that the top pocket and the bottom pocket need to have the same shape, right? Right there. And this has extra length here because it gets folded in to form the welt. But you can see that they're the same width. This was the issue I had, that the bottom pocket shrunk this way, it got narrower. So when I was trying to sew these two together with a decent seam allowance, it wasn't possible. I always block fuse. I always do it, but for this case, I didn't. So I've learned my own lesson, you know, do what you preach. Okay, so your pocket is meant to be placed on the grain line and I would suggest cutting it out of an edge where you have selvage somewhere there. And when I put this on the fabric and fused it, it just went, it shrunk that way, but just on the top, not here, because that's not interfaced. So what I would do 
Next time is cut this interfacing piece, but just cut it longer. Just cut it way longer, it doesn't matter. Keep the same width, but cut it longer. And fuse one on the edge, fuse another on the edge, make sure they're even. After you fuse that and you have that already fused, then put your pattern piece on top when it's already fused and then cut it out. I just wasn't accounting for the fact that this specific fabric reacted a lot to the fusing of the interfacing. I used really lightweight interfacing and it did shrink that way. You know, it, it was considerable to affect the, the seam allowance here because you have 3 8 seam allowance and I ended up having about a quarter of an inch. Here is my midway bomber. I'll show you the print up close. It's so nice. I love any black background. It's got white shapes of leaves and those flowers on top. Oh, I just absolutely love it. When I saw this in the fabric shop, I went nuts. I got two meters of this fabric, which is usually more than what I ever get. I always know for a jacket like this, you need about one and a half meters. That is the calculation in my head. And actually the pattern recommends that you just need one and a half meters. So that is really good. And yeah, I have enough to make a skirt. I'm gonna make a matching pencil skirt. Not that I'll wear them together, but I do love the fabric a lot. There you can see the collar of the bomber jacket there that is made with rib knit material. The rib knit material that you choose needs to stretch more than the main fabric. So the pattern recommends 75% stretch. And you know, it is very stretchy. It's usually always stretchier than all the other fabrics. And I have purchased a meter of this type of material that I use only for these things. So I've got it tucked in there. I have some in navy, I have some in black. And it's good to always have some of those pieces around because some patterns only need a little bit. I didn't need much of that at all. So that's what that's made with and the cuff and the band at the bottom. Now this extension here that uses the main piece is super easy to sew, easier than what you think. It's just a piece that is sewn onto there and then this is just treated as one piece. So it's just extended onto the band at the bottom. And here are my famous <laughs> welt pockets. I really like them, they are small, like you can't even get your hand in there properly, but they are pretty and I think making them in the contrast fabric was good. Now I chose a black fabric, a scrap actually, that is the same type of my main fabric, the same weight, the same type, only just black. And you can see some top stitching. The piece that goes underneath is the main fabric and I would always do it like that. I wouldn't want to put my hand inside and have like red in there or some other thing, some other type of fabric so super fun to do it is fully lined inside i have a lot of this lining fabric that i use to line everything i make when it's a neat project like this it has a nice amount of stretch and it's so so neat inside you can see that intersection there how the zipper comes from in between the top of the zipper there that you've chosen is tucked in there between the collar and there and then everything is neatly enclosed. The collar between the lining and the jacket. And you know, you might think I'm not saying the truth, but actually I always find that lining something is easier than not lining it. And it looks nicer too. If you didn't line it, you would have to deal with the zipper tape there and tucking it in and just making it look pretty somehow <laughs> because you don't have the lining to cover it. Um, same as your zipper tape, down the center front, you could see it. And when your jacket flips open, you can sort of see that. And I don't like that. So I like lining things. And the pattern has full instructions on how to line this. And actually the way that the pattern instructs to line has totally changed the way I'm gonna line everything from now on because the way I've done it before was actually harder, <laughs> silly me. <laughs> if you wanna see how to line this jacket, because it's not in this video, you can watch the video I made of the Constellation hoodie from Love Notions. This is not a zipper jacket originally, it's a hoodie. It's supposed to be closed and only have a half zipper. But I did a hack and I added a full zipper. And you know, pretend that the hood is your collar from the bomber because the technique is the same. And you'll see the zipper enclosed there and you'll see exactly how to do everything the difference is that with this one i didn't line the sleeves so there's no lining there but you know with this bomber jacket i did put on the sleeves and then just tucked 
them in. So you just tuck in the lining of the sleeve in there. And then you have these raw areas here at the bottom together. You treat them as one piece and then you sew your cuff normal. And that is done. There is a much more complicated way to have the lining enclosed there where you bag out the sleeve. You know, this pattern doesn't go there and I'm glad it doesn't because you don't actually need to do that. This is a far away look. This is the length that I chose after adding an inch. I think I did need that inch. I think it would have been a bit short for me if I hadn't have added it. So I'm glad I did. Here at the bottom you can see the main fabric there in that area there and it was much easier to do than what you would think. And then comes the ribbing that goes around there. There you can see the welt pocket. I wanted it to stand out and use black so you can see it. So they're very tiny, look. That's my fingers touching the end of the pocket there. So I don't think you could actually put many things in here <laughs> at all. But I like them, they look nice. Or I could just use them to rest my hands in. <laughs> I took a chance and didn't lengthen the sleeve pieces and they are perfect with the cuff for my arms. So I've got long arms and they reach to where I want them to reach. This is the collar piece there, same ribbing as the cuffs and the band at the bottom, very neat. And everything is enclosed within the lining there, love that. There. It is a busy print so you're probably not going to see the raglan seam but it comes from there, it's slightly curved. So it has that type of curve like that and because it's got a seam there that incorporated the dart it fits so well this roundness here of the shoulder sometimes it's hard to achieve with raglan sleeves and with a sleeve that is sort of slim fit compared to other raglan sleeves um, the fit is excellent like I don't have excessive bunching up or anything there's no excess like fabric here that can happen with raglan sleeves sometimes so I'm very, very happy with the feet of this one. So the first time I saw this fabric, I always envisioned it was gonna be a jacket like this. Um, I love these tones of dark pink and I have a cami to match, but you know, I could wear black as well. Um, but I just absolutely love it. In summary, <laughs> thumbs up from me. <laughs> super love this jacket I love having jackets I think if you take the time to make a jacket that is really nice with the fabric that you like you dedicate the time a jacket deserves of course no rush you always have a lot of value in your hands you know if you go to a shop and want to buy a jacket it, they're usually very very expensive um, much more expensive than like a pair of pants or a blouse or something like that so making a jacket is always super worthwhile for me at least um, because I come from the school of thought that sewing should always <laughs> cost less resources than what you would spend you know in clothes ready to wear and with a higher quality you know higher quality fabrics a fit that is going to be for you and in the style that you like, you know, there's no way to lose <laughs> when you're sewing clothes for yourself. And in the cost department, I think it's more noticeable. The prices of ready-to-wear jackets that are super nice compared to what you would actually have to invest in the materials to make it yourself. Techniques, maybe it can take a little bit longer, um, but a style like this is not complex, complex compared to other styles. It is a neat garment, you don't have to worry about fabric fraying, that sort of thing. You know, you can choose to make it unlined. The welt pockets, maybe you can skip them if you want to. I love them, I don't do them often enough. And I always think I need to just make them and put them on other styles that don't have them because they are nice. I'm not a fan of pockets in the practical sense. I don't put things in pockets, I don't like that. I don't like weighing my clothes down with items like phones or keys I carry a purse but visually I think a welt pocket is beautiful and it deserves to be on any garment 
just for the visual aspect, you know? And they're, they're fun to make, it's really fun to do. It's sometimes a gamble on fabrics, how it's going to react to the adhesive that the interfacing has. I didn't really consider it, you know, I followed the instructions and I fused on my piece and while I was sewing, I noticed it just got smaller and I was like, oh, I already I had done so many things already on the welt. Um, I'd sewn it, I'd cut it, I'd flipped it, you know, going back and doing that again, I think would have turned out really, really wonky because my jacket front piece would have already been cut out. So not going back, you know, there's always a solution. I used a quarter inch seam allowance to sew all around the pocket as you saw instead of three eighths, which is what the whole pattern needs. So if you make some tiny mistake in a project you're making, that does affect the way that you need to sew it by altering a seam allowance or doing something different. I just urge you to be open about it. Just think outside the box, be positive. Don't think you've just ruined your whole thing and throw it away. Just try and look for a way out and a way to make it work because I think nine out of 10 times there is always a way to still make it work. The welt pocket is still nice. It's still functional. It's still firm around all the corners. It has to be firm. It's just that the bag that's in there tucked within the lining had to be sewn together with a teeny seam allowance, but it's holding it in place and that's what matters. You see me mention block fusing a lot in a lot of the videos where there's facings. Any piece that goes onto a garment that needs fusing is always gonna conserve its shape and size. Much better if you just fuse your fabric first, let it shrink if it wants to, and then cut your pattern piece. And if I'd done what I say, I wouldn't have had the issue with the, with the pocket. At least for this brand, I can actually just trust and choose a size based on my body measurements without knowing the finished garment measurements. I know that they've drafted it correctly. I'm not gonna sew it and it's not gonna fit if I've taken my measurements correctly and chosen my size. So I'm very happy with that. And I have two other jackets that I want to sew. I have the patterns. The Whistler jacket, I'll put a line out here so you can see it. I love that, the zipper. I mean, I always love sewing jackets, but all the details there are amazing. And the other one is the Sundance jacket. And I find this one so unique, those pleats at the back. It's just so, so, so pretty. I love that. <laughs> so I have those patterns in my file there. And I hope to sew them when I'm inspired with a fabric and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a nice pairing. So if you want to try the Midway Bomber, I highly recommend if you want to check out the other patterns too. You know, they are on sale till today. You could get them for less. And if you use my affiliate link, that supports me because I receive a small commission from there and the pattern doesn't cost you any extra. I hope you give well pockets a go. I just need to sew them more on other things as well. They're very fun to do. I hope you enjoyed seeing this video and I will see you very soon with more sewing. Bye. Ooh.